The never-ending, everlasting stress you're exposed to and made to survive in a narcissistic relationship devastatingly impacts different parts of your body, one of which is your eyes. Many survivors develop chronic vision-related disorders that become extremely difficult to reverse or to recover from. I'm talking about disorders like glaucoma, cataracts, hypermetropia, myopia, astigmatism, and other disorders alike. I do understand that there may be other causes behind these conditions, but chronic stress is one of the most important and significant one. So many studies have been done to find out the relationship between chronic stress and various vision-related disorders, and surprisingly, they have found a very strong link. In today's episode, we are going to explore the same, so stay until the end. Hi, I am Danish, a narcissistic abuse recovery professional. In today's episode, we are going to talk about vision disorders and its relationship with narcissistic abuse trauma. If that sounds interesting enough, please make sure to subscribe before we begin because your subscription helps spread awareness about narcissistic abuse. All of the abuse you experience in a narcissistic relationship first interacts with your sense organs, your eyes being one of the same. Your eyes witness all of that betrayal, cheating, manipulation, gaslighting, that true twisting, deflection, projection, you know all the terms. Before entering your head, before knowing what's being done and before feeling the impact, where is that perception made and how is that information collected first? By hearing and seeing it mainly. Now, think about this for a moment. If your eyes have been made to see all of that continuously without a pause, doesn't it make sense for these eyes to get tired and then show that tiredness and stored trauma in uh, the form of various vision-related disorders? It does make perfect sense. They say your body keeps the score. Well, this is how our eyes keep the score. They get so fatigued by this chronic and continuous exposure to stress that they just finally give up and that giving up then shows up as various problems that, you, that I already mentioned. You may have either experienced this personally or heard of someone who might have experienced this. Many people start crying without a reason. They just don't know why they're crying, but they, then they also notice their eyes are shedding so many tears. They just can't explain why that is happening. If you have had an experience like that, let me know in the comments. That is the expression of your eyes pain. It is the pain stored in hair, which then comes out in that form. Let's talk about an interesting relationship between chronic stress and glaucoma for a moment. If you do not know what glaucoma is, it's an eye condition that causes blindness because of the optic nerve damage. Optic nerve connects your eye with your brain. Now, what happens in glaucoma is that your eye is not able to regulate pressure and the pressure increases and increases without any symptoms, which then leads to slow damaging of the nerves and ultimately blindness. A lot of research has been done on this subject and I recently came across a paper which summed it up all because the, the objective of that research was to find out if stress is the actual cause behind glaucoma. So what the conclusion was that stress is one of the major and the primary causes in addition to other causes such as genetic causes as well. There are some of the things that this study pointed out. By the way, I'm linking the same in the description. So here, let me read them to you. Acute and chronic stress increases intraocular pressure and long-term stress can lead to vascular dysregulation of the microcirculation in the eye and brain, leading to partial hypoxia and hypoglycemia. Here is where it gets interesting. Even if nerve cells do not die, they may then become inactive, also called as silent neurons. Degenerative changes have been reported in the brain of glaucoma patients, affecting not only 
enter the great or transsynaptic areas of the central visual pathway, but degeneration is also found in brain areas involved in emotional appraisal and the physiological regulation of stress hormones. What I just read to you in simple terms means that stress and the prolonged exposure to it destroys our nervous system, our nerves. Even if our nerves are not killed or do not degenerate, they still become silent, which simply means they stop functioning. Now you can imagine how that has a connection with our optic nerve and regulation of the microcirculation that happens in our eyes of the fluid of our tears. It's very important for our eyes to maintain the balance, to shed tears. If the fluid gets accumulated, then the pressure develops. And if the nerves are not working properly, how would that happen? Think about that for a second. What they also found in glaucoma patients is the degeneration of the areas of the brain that are related with or to stress uh, regulation. What this paper also points out is the fact that there are also psychological hints indicating that stress is a cause of glaucoma because glaucoma patients show typical personality traits that are associated with low stress resilience. They often have cold hands or feet, are ambitious, professionally successful, perfectionistic, obsessive, brooding and worrying a lot. The important question to ask here is, how does a person develop low stress tolerance? Well, if they are continuously and repeatedly exposed to never-ending, everlasting stress, of course, their window of tolerance is going to narrow, which simply means a small trigger will throw them into a zone of hyperarousal or hypoarousal. If you do not know what that is, Hyperarousal is fight or flight where you're activated palpitations, you are racing, everything is tightened up, ready to either run away or fight back. Hyperarousal is when you are more frozen and you feel depressed, there is no energy, you just feel helpless, completely shutting down. That is the phase of hyperarousal. What does that have to do with narcissistic abuse? Well, everything in a narcissistic relationship, you don't even get a moment to breathe, let alone rel relax and just be at peace. You don't have that luxury. You just are made to be hyper vigilant, and you have to walk on broken glass if you want to avoid getting punished by the narcissist. You have to constantly think and ruminate on the things they said, the things they'll say, and all of that just to make sense of what's happening to you. So how will you not develop chronic health conditions when it has been proven stress is one of the biggest causes behind major health issues? Now, the line that is the most important and the proof that seals the deal, that says it as it is, goes like this. If stress hormone levels and inflammation parameters are reduced in glaucoma patients by relaxation with meditation, the normalization of intraocular pressure happens, which is yet another clue that suggests that there is a direct relationship between stress and what happens in your eyes. Inadvertently, it shows us narcissist is the cause of all your problems, psychological and physical as well. If you have glaucoma and you are with a narcissist, you possibly need to dig in deeper and consider them to be the cause behind the condition that could lead to blindness. If nothing motivates you, if nothing gives you clarity enough, they should. They are taking your light, your vision away. And that is the biggest loss you could ever experience in your life. In the earlier part of this episode, I talked about in utero epigenetics and how that might be associated with early onset of myopia in young children. It's very important to talk about. We'll, we'll go into that in a minute. But before that, I'd like to talk about glaucoma a little bit more. Glaucoma runs in my family on my mother's side. Every sister, every brother of hers has it. So I'm afraid that I might get it in my 40s, 50s, who knows, but I've been trying to take care of it. What I'm trying to say here is this is generational trauma. It's not a condition. Yes, there are genetic changes, but why were they triggered in the first place? So 
there's a lot of trauma i think that part of my family holds in their eyes and i have been trying to release a lot of that i've been trying to get uh, my retina checked optic nerve checked and so on but let's hope for the best coming back to myopia and its relationship with in utero experiences it has been established that the environment in the womb impacts the growth and development of a child if the mother is in a dysregulated state and the blood is filled and flooded with stress hormones the baby is going to be activated as well the baby is going to be dysregulated as well the baby is going to be born already primed for living in an environment that requires survival not thriving not growth not development not curiosity none of that the baby will already come into this world stunned having that said they did a very complicated study on uh, this relationship in utero epigenetics and the development rather early onset of myopia in young children and they took samples from the umbilical cord they studied the children for years and finally concluded that the environment influences or triggers the early onset of myopia in young children so you can imagine why the eyes of such children are developed with not a faulty but with a weak inner lens that we have in our eyes or why their vision is weak it's not as strong as it should be because they were exposed to a lot of stress even when they were not prepared for it talking about my personal experiences i was diagnosed with myopia when i was in 5th grade makes sense now and god knows how much i was shamed by my father for needing glasses to him needing glasses depending on glasses was a sign of weakness because for him i was his extension so i had to be perfect how come i now need these glasses out of a sudden when before that i didn't even mention that i am having problems well i didn't mention because i was afraid it came to a point where i started having very strong headaches and i couldn't perform in school that they took me to an opth ophthalmologist and then they ruled out that i had this condition i remember he just wanted to beat me it was my maternal grandfather who saved me from him at that time i i just don't still can't understand why he wanted to physically abuse me for no fault of mine but i kind of get it how because of how cruel he is and what he is capable of so in a nutshell what i'm trying to help you understand is that it's not just these health issues that you are having are, are a cause or an impact of a random thing that happened in your body everything has a story everything has a background so do your eyes your eyes are telling you a story through the problems they are having now i can't promise you that you are going to regain your sight if you have problems or your eyes are going to be totally okay if you are struggling but what i can tell you is there is hope hope that if you work on your nervous system you can control and manage your eye related conditions hope that if you stay in a relaxed body if you work on your traumas your body is going to recuperate it's going to restore itself it's going to heal because your body has what it takes to become better to regain the health you either never had or you lost in such a relationship or with such parents with that let's bring this episode to an end i hope you enjoyed it if you did let me know in the comments share this episode with others if you found it insightful i'll talk with you in the next one until then as always let the healing begin and continue